You won't forget Rose Siggins in a hurry. She's a motor mechanic, wife and mum. She also has no legs. A rare genetic disorder saw them amputated when Rose was two. But like Australia's Kurt Fernley, Rose wouldn't be beaten and what she's achieving is astounding everyone. Here's Alex Cullen. You know, I love cars so much, I actually went to school and earned my degree in automotive. Really? Yeah. So I have a bachelor's degree in automotive industrial management. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Professor of cars. <laughs> Behind the wheel of her vintage Mustang... Listen to that. Rose Siggins is just another driver on the streets of Pueblo, Colorado. Yeah, when people see me um, driving about, they uh, just assume that I'm just like them. But Rose is different. She has half a body. If you think this gets in the way of living a full life, think again. All right, here we go. Rose is one strong lady. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And as you'll see, she has yet to find a challenge she can't overcome. When do you first remember you were different? When, my, when the kids were outside playing and they're running down the block and I wasn't able to run with them or keep up with them. I think that's when I really noticed the difference. Was that hard coming to that realization? Um, I think it was. You know, it was very heartbreaking because, you know, mentally I'm the same. Um, physically, I felt the same, but I just had, you know, certain limitations. Rose was born with all of her lower spine missing, a rare condition called sacrilegenesis. Australian athlete Kurt Fernley has the same condition, but still has his legs. When Rose was two, Hers were amputated. Would it still be done today? Um, no, the amputation of you know removal of both legs would not be done today. Um, more than likely, they would probably just be placed in a wheelchair. Does that give you any feeling of regret? Um, none at all. None. None at all. I'm, I'm happy not to be in a wheelchair. This is Rose when she was 12 years old. Life at home was full of support. Got him down. But because she was so different she endured the cruelest of bullying at school. What did the kids say to you? Just horrible names. Freak, freak show, just whatever. So you're always hearing that constantly around you. How did you deal with that? You just grow, grow up and kind of grow over it because when you realize you're you, it happened at 12 years old. I had met a young boy that was a year younger than me. Same condition that I was in. And I remember staring at him. And I remember all of the things that my friends had told me. Wow, looking at you, it looks like you're sitting in a hole in the ground. Wow, looking at you, you look like you're half a person. Wow, looking at you, you know, you look strange. And when I was looking at him, all those same thoughts were going through my mind. So I realized that's what it must look like, so it's not that bad. With the support of her family, Rose felt capable of anything. She became a mechanic and met Dave, who worked at an auto parts store. I love you. Love you. You would think that, you know, your friends and stuff would be like, well, here's, here's this lady you're dating, you realize she has no legs, you know, or hey, you know, she's kind of freaky looking. But I really didn't get any hassles from any of my friends or anything. I'm not going to say my parents maybe thought I wasn't going to find somebody normal. I mean, I shouldn't use that word, but, you know, but I, I, I'd find somebody. And I think maybe they always thought I'd find somebody different, um, would be like me. Uh, you know, I found this person and I fell in love and I wanted to get married and they were okay with it. Rose never thought she would get married, but now she and Dave were husband and wife. And here's where Rose's story takes another unexpected turn. This is how my belly has grown now. We were just as surprised as probably anybody else would have been about, you know, being pregnant. Definitely feeling a little front end heavy. The easiest way to explain how Rose works is, is we call it the Barbie doll analogy. If you take a Barbie doll and you pop the legs off of a Barbie doll, the V shape of what is left is exactly the same thing that's with Rose. What were doctors telling you about getting pregnant? Doctors were really concerned, um, just because one, it never happened before. You know, they'd done all their research and found that no one else ever in the world with sacrilegenesis, being a female, had ever decided to, you know, have children. She's missing pretty much everything from here to here. 
Dr. Matthew Simonich is Rose's orthopaedic surgeon. She still has all of her normal female parts. The hard part for her is, is carrying the baby all the way to term because and as the baby grows, it actually pushes up into her lungs and that makes her lungs kind of get smaller and smaller as, as the pregnancy goes on toward the end and it makes it very hard for her to breathe. It's just physically exhausting. You're concerned about what if she turns out looking like Rose, but we decided that how she was what is what made her the wonderful person that she is. So how could we say that bringing someone in who is a little different isn't going to make their life that much greater? So we figured either way we're going to love it. Surprising everyone, including herself, Rose gave birth by caesarean to a healthy baby boy. All I really wanted to do was just lift the blanket and just make sure he was there, make sure he was all there. I remember touching his big toe and his little toe and his next toe, filling his legs, and I thought, okay, I can go to sleep now. He's okay, he's perfect, he's whole. And this is Luke today. He's 11. What have you learned from your mum? Um, that uh, to never give up and to uh, look at people in a different way, just not how they look. Don't judge a book by its cover. Yep. Your mum, well, she's di different to other mums, obviously. Not to me. She, she still grounds me, does other things, tells me what to wear, <laughs> gets upset when I get dirt on my clothes. <laughs> the Siggins family hadn't finished growing. I love you. Rose became pregnant again, this time with a baby girl. And this time there were serious complications during the delivery. You bring the baby out and the baby's not breathing. There's where the worry begins. For more than 15 minutes, they fought to save Shelby. As long as we know she's sleeping, that's okay. Come on, Shelby. You gotta take a breath, sweet girl. And then she did. Cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. Cried some more, maybe a little more, pulled it out and thought, wow, what a miraculous child she is. And she's just like me. <laughs> well, Shelby is now four. Rose, does Shelby know you're different? If you ask her, Shelby, where's mommy's legs? Can you show mommy where her legs are? She points to my arms, which is really fascinating. Um, when Luke was this age, I used to ask him and he used to try to lift up the back of my shirt and told me they were on my butt or, you know, they were on my back or something. Um, so I think she does, but she doesn't at the same time. Being a mother of two is a big job in any household. For Rose, a simple task of making dinner is a finely tuned series of manoeuvres. She's found a way to do just about everything a mum needs to do. Anything you don't do? Um, windows. Windows? Just because I'm not tall enough. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you very much. Well, this is... Sounds like Shelby's. Everything to about three feet down is hers, and everything about three feet up is mine. So. Okay, go that way. But Rose's body is showing signs of wear and tear. I think she's starting to develop a little bit of arthritis as she's getting older, and I think that her fierce independence and the things that have carried her so far in life are starting to catch up with her a little bit, and she thinks she's realizing that uh, asking for help now and again is important because it takes a lot of stress off her joints. You ready? People can learn a lot from Rose. I mean, if you've got the right attitude and the right way of looking at things and the right perspective, you can accomplish anything you want. Ready? Uh -huh. Okay. So, Rose, when you don't have a skateboard, this is how you get around? Exactly. <laughs> is she perfect in your eyes? That's that, you yeah, know, no, that's never been asked. <laughs> I guess to say is she perfect in my eyes, because when I see her in my eyes, I see her as a whole person. I don't see her as, 
you know, somebody with no legs, somebody with an indifference, somebody who's, you know, all of these things everybody says, I just see my lovely wife in front of me. So that would make it perfect in my eyes. So Rose, is this your only skateboard? No, I have three of them. When I first met you, I of course realized that you didn't have legs, but it's amazing how quickly you forget about your condition. Thank you. It's always been a goal. I've always wanted that. If I can convince you in the first, you know, 15 seconds that I'm as normal as you are, then that's how you're gonna treat me. Being different, it's okay. We can learn things from being different. Different is cool. Strong one, Rose. Which brings us back to that arm wrestle. <laughs> Rose, geez. <laughs> you're a strong one, Rose. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you so much.